Hello everyone, I'm Vin Ebenu here in Manchester Township High School with Manchester Police Chief Lisa Parker. And today we're going to discuss what it takes to become a police officer, physically, mentally, emotionally, and the state of police today in our community. Chief, this is one of the more intense or rigorous um, agility tests that, I've, that I know of in the area. So what is it that you require specifically of the men and women coming through trying to become officers? Okay. Well, this is a multi-phase testing process. And the first phase is to come in into a, as you call it, agility test. We call it a physical training uh, test. And it's to really put them under stress and you could hear some of the officers yelling and um, creating a, an atmosphere of stress for the candidates or the applicants and we do that because we want to see how they're going to respond can they physically um, work under stressful situations and that's to mirror what they do when they're out on the street it's stressful at times and you need to be able to physically perform under stress the other thing is is that mentally are you thinking can you talk when you're under stress um, what do you say is it appropriate um, or, or do you quit uh, this, so this testing process, this PT test, um, tests a multitude of things that will measure your potential for success when you're a street cop. Are you looking at results or are you looking at how they handle themselves physically during these tests? So I would say both, and both are equally important. So how, they, how they're responding and working under stressful situations is important, but they do have to perform at a certain level uh, to pass this physical. And once they pass the physical, something that I added to this process was boxing. Because once they've stressed their body to the max, then they have to go in and box for approximately one minute and they have to be able to perform again under stressful situations under you know fighting you fight whoever the next person is that that's next in line that passes the test uh, we don't get to pick on the street if the person's big tall uh short uh you know male female it doesn't matter so you have to be able to again perform under stress and protect yourself and protect others and that's what we do on the street is the boxing part the toughest out of all of it because of what you just said and preparing for instances where you're going to get into an altercation with a perp or a suspect uh, how not necessarily how they punch but how they fight well it I wouldn't say it's the hardest it's the hardest if you haven't prepared for it but they know in advance that they're going to have to box so if this is the first time they're walking into a boxing ring and they're they have to this first time they're getting punched in the face yeah it, it's it's going to be hard for them but if they've prepared for this they should do fine and we have a sensei in there to make sure everything is safe and that nobody is, is hurt um, but the, you do have to perform again performing under stressful conditions and it's all about preparation so if they prepared for today they should do well if they just rolled off their mom's couch they're not gonna do well what are some of the other things you look for in an officer with what they can, how they think, how they write, how they uh, address certain situations? What are some of the things that you look for? Okay, so the next phase would be our written, and that's we're looking uh, to make sure that uh, they have a minimal academic standard that they can perform uh, the task commensurate with uh, being a law enforcement officer. And then from there, we have an oral board, which is made up of command staff personnel, and with, they're asked a multitude of questions. These questions consist of things that deal with integrity, commitment, dedication, preparation. Um, what, what are you doing with your life to prepare for the best career that anybody could work in? It's law enforcement. And, but you, you can't just walk into it. You, there is preparation that has to be done. And we can see that. Those who have prepared to come into our uh, oral boards, um, they, they know how to sell themselves. They know what they had to do to get there. Um, and, that, and that's a process. Like when they were in college, did they get good grades or were they just there to you know, have a good time? We look at that. We look at their grades. We look at their performance standards in other areas and other settings because we know that the past is definitely a good indicator of future success. So if they're doing things to successfully prepare for this job, we'll see it. And that's their opportunity to shine is, is in the oral interview when they come in and they, they talk about those things. 
What are some of the things you need to hear, or you and the command staff, during those sessions with how they think critically, how they think situationally? If you put them in a certain situation, you know, what would they do and what would they say? So there are some officers who come in who have police experience, but there are many who do not. So we don't expect them to know the law per se, but we do expect them to have have the ability to be compassionate, kind, um, have a sense of service or duty. Um, We expect them to you know, there are certain things that if they say during our oral interview process that, that it, it, they're terminated. Like if they, they've had uh, uh, excessive violence, if they've had uh, like acts of violence, like fighting, bar fighting, uh, uh, things a lot like theft. Um, because, you know, as police officers, we're going into people's house when they're most vulnerable. I want to know that there can be a million dollars sitting on that table and that not one officer will touch that. So to me, integrity is important but they have to have demonstrated that from not just that day but a lifetime of that and we realize nobody's perfect people have made mistakes so when they come in they must be honest about the mistakes and then I want to see what did you learn from that and why are you a better person because of it so we're looking not for perfect people but for people who potentially made a mistake and they they've learned from it mistakes can't be like like theft or violent mistakes, they, they're, they, that's, that's a termination. Where do you see a lot of uh, men and women coming from in terms of backgrounds, other careers, or do you see a lot of them coming right out of college and wanting to become a police officer, or is they coming from another field and, you know, get the call to, you know, serve? I'm going to say most of our applicants uh, are coming out of college or, or military. Um, there are younger officers, um, usually mid twenties uh, to thirty. That's usually our our age range. And with that, some of them have had other um, other skill sets and, and been in other other careers that really weren't as rewarding or satisfying as maybe a police job was. And they're looking for a career change. We do see that, but we do see a lot of people that come out of college and um, maybe have been a class one or a class two. Uh, over, you know, over in uh, Teesside or Long Beach Island, and they, they've kind of tested the waters, and now they want to make this their, their full-time career. Well, once on the force, uh, what, are, what are the certain classes, the different classes that officers would get assigned to? Is it based on uh, f- physical fitness? Is it based on, you know, uh, how they do on a written test? How do you place officers into certain parts? Okay, so once you're hired, uh, you, then you go into a 12-week field training uh, process. And for the first year, you're really under a lot of scrutiny to make sure that you can perform and assimilate into a, a lifetime of uh, policing. And if they make it past that one year, they're always assigned to patrol. Um, everybody does their time in patrol. And the other assignments outside of patrol, like into the Detective Bureau, canine, traffic safety, um, these things come with time and you earn them. You earn them through um, your performance in patrol and you show a certain aptitude for the other collateral assignments. And then, and then of course, there's always you know, promotional opportunities to move up the ranks as, as time goes on. As a police chief, are there certain things that you look for when promotional opportunities come along with who you would like to promote uh, up the ranks? Absolutely. So we have a very comprehensive promotional testing process, um, and it it starts with a, a written exam, an oral exam. We take into consideration uh, performance evaluations, um, their education, and we look also at you will see in patrol informal leadership already rising to the top you 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 see that you'll see people who will work harder um just go out of their way to be the best in in patrol and they usually are the ones that do uh the best on the tests as well and and you know move up through the ranks because they're they're committed they're committed they're dedicated to the profession you know, and our officers, I have to say, are um, highly committed, highly motivated. It's a very competitive process. Um, but I'm very fortunate because I, I work with a great group of people, as you could see today. What, what is it like to be a, a, a police officer for so many years? Why is it, um, would somebody want to become a police officer? What are some of the things that, 
you've heard from other officers that have gone through the ranks, have gone that you've worked with over the past uh, couple decades or so. So I've actually um, last month was 30 years in law enforcement, and I have to say this is the best job anybody could ever have. Think about it. You get paid to help people. You get paid to serve your community. You get paid to work with the best men and women you could ever imagine. It is a family. Um, because if you think about it, you're with these people at least 40 hours a week. You're going on intense calls with each other. You rely on each other for everything. You train together. You work together. You eat together. You shoot together. You work out together. Um, it's it's a it's a when I say brotherhood, and I'm a female, but is it brotherhood, sisterhood? Um, but there's nothing like it. And maybe I feel that way because I come from a family where my father was a police chief, my brothers were cops, my, fa- or my husband uh, in law, is in law, was in law enforcement at the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office, most of my friends are cops. Um, I just can't imagine doing anything else. I just think it's the best job ever. What, what, would, you, what, would, you, what would you say to somebody who's thinking about entering a career in law enforcement but isn't sure that they can commit to it or have what it takes so you know inside if this is for you 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 know um and once you get that bug like i would say go do a ride along you and most police departments will let you come and do a ride along and ride with a police officer talk to officers they want to tell you about their job they want to tell you about what they do call your local police department ask if you can come in and and meet with the police chief or or the captain or the patrol lieutenants ask them questions um, we have auxiliary programs. Many PDs have auxiliary programs where if you're you know, younger and you want to see if this is something that you might be interested in doing, try our auxiliary program out. Um, there are uh, college kids who, on their summer breaks, they wind up going over, like, like I said, to uh, the Barrier Islands in Seaside and Long Beach Township and working as Class 1s and Class 2s and testing it out and seeing if this is something that they would want to do. But once you do it, you will know this is for you or this isn't for you. How do you or the, the, state, the state of police today, in, in talking with other officers around Ocean County, around the community, um, around the country, um, deal with, I guess, maybe uh, not as much of a rise in enrollment for police officers or how people in the community may perceive police officers for good or for bad? How do, how do you handle that on a day-to-day basis? I would say that most people in law enforcement would agree that we're not always portrayed fairly in the media, Um, but it's our job, it's our responsibility as law enforcement leaders to, to get the message out, to get the positive message out that what our guys and gals are doing every single day on the streets, which we just think is routine. We need to use all of our social media platforms. We need to use every opportunity to meet with the community and to show them and to be a part of the change, the change of, of just how police officers are viewed. And that, that's kind of on us. We, we need to take responsibility for that, and we need to be more active in, in, in doing that. But I'll say this as well. Every time we have an interaction with somebody, every single police officer in the United States, every time you have interaction, that's your opportunity to change how somebody feels about law enforcement. It's your opportunity to show them how you're here to serve your community, not to be served. And so it's on us to change the image. Chief, thanks for the time. That's cheap. (laughs) Thank you for joining us. It was great having you. That's Chief Lisa Parker here at Manchester Township High School where they're undergoing the physical agility test to determine if they have what it takes to become a police officer.